Jonathan, re regarding your prediction vis-à-vis uh, uh, -vis the Likud and uh, whenever the next election takes place, that they will uh, implode. No question. Many many people are, are of that view. But uh, where do you think all those Likud voters would go, politically speaking? I think that a lot of them, believe it or not, if may may go to uh, Itamar Ben Gvir. I think the right wing of the Likud has no choice uh, but to go to him. There's nobody else right right now. There's nobody else. So I think the right wing of the of the Likud voters, the electorate, will probably go to Otsma Yehudit to Ben Gvir because that's what the polling is showing right now. Um, the rest of them depends on what new parties come up. We haven't seen anything yet. And I'm, I mean, right wing parties, they may go there as well. For example, we've had a number of polls showing reservist parties being formed. One poll, which just absolutely shocked, uh, shocked me, uh, was one in which uh, people like Yair Golan, people like Brothers in Arms and similar ilk actually got support by reservists, by the Miolim. And um, this is not possible. The Miolim are not that collectively stupid and self-destructive to vote for an organization like Brothers in Arms, who was one of them, who was responsible in large part for the misperception that our army was divided and incapable of fighting because of the uh, dissonance over the uh, anti-judicial reform protests. Or people like Yer Golan, General Yer Golan, who should be disqualified on the basis of his anti-Semitism. Here's a general who characterized our settlers in the territories as, quote, subhuman. That term hasn't been used since the Nazis, but he felt comfortable saying it, using it. He shouldn't be allowed, he should not be allowed to run. So where are they going to go? We have to see, in conclusion, we have to see what new parties come up. They certainly aren't going to go to Gantz. They aren't going to go to Eisenkot. They certainly aren't going to go to Yair Lapid. So we have to look from the center right as to where they might go. Jewish home, no. I don't even know what Jewish home stands for, honestly, except as a vehicle for certain politicians to, to run for high office. Um, no, when you, I- when you, meant, when you use the term Jewish home, which is the English for Bayt Yehudi, are you, refer, are you perhaps referring to the uh, what's known in Hebrew as the Miflaga uh, Tzilut Adatit, the religious Zionist party? Because that's that's distinct from Bayt Yehudi. That's Those are two different entities. Yeah, they, they really are. I don't really know what characterizes the Bayt Yehudi voter. It's it's very difficult. It should, they it had should, a lot. Again, the Bayt Yehudi is a party that is not currently in the Knesset. It didn't... Yeah. It, you're, talk, you're not talking about the Smotrich, the, for, the uh, no, I'm talking about the, the Smotrich party. You're talking about the no, other the party, party which didn't get in. Which didn't get in, that was I, that was I, headed I, by uh, Ayala Chaket. Right, I think that's basically uh, washed up. Completely. So as far as uh, B'Tzalel is concerned, and the uh, religious Zionists, um, I don't even know if they're going to pass threshold. People are very, and myself included, Full disclosure. I think they will. I think they will, but I think Ben Gvir is likely to get twice as many seats as they do. Um, I've seen almost every poll that's come out that hasn't been published also. And um, Itamar is looking very good right now. Very good. Um, the problem is with the deep state, because let's just say we have another government, a, a full-blown right-wing government that wants to fight for victory, that wants sovereignty over the territories, that wants to basically tell the Americans, you know, go home. You have enough problems of your own. 
don't even think about unilaterally recognizing a Palestinian state. Just go home. A, a, a government that would strive for military self-sufficiency. All of these points, it's questionable whether they would actually be able to accomplish these goals given the depth and the, the evil of the deep state. You'll have to cleanse the army completely. This was in a speech, the substance of a speech I gave up in Haifa recently to a Hester Yeshiva, where I talked about the need not just for top-down reform in the army, but for bottom-up. Would the deep state allow that? I don't know. I mean, it may require emergency measures, emergency legislation to overcome certain acts of resistance, legal and otherwise, by the deep state. We are, our backs are at the wall. We're, I wouldn't say at the wall. Our, our, we are at the edge of the cliff with our backs to the void right now, the chasm. And when people are in that kind of position, you have to, you have to, you have to do what's required to save the state because that's what we're facing right now. If we lose this war, and it sure looks like we're going to, They'll define victory any way they want in order to secure a withdrawal or a ceasefire or a capitulation by any other by other by any other name. If we're going to prevent that, then we're going to have to come together. We're going to have to have a new election by whatever means possible. And we're going to have to clean the rot out of this country. And it doesn't matter whether you're religious or you're unreligious, it does or a religious, it doesn't matter. Just like the people in the in the cattle cars going to Auschwitz, they represented all of us there. The neologists from Hungary were sitting with the um, the the Satmar Hasidim going to the gas chambers. Yeah, for and those, this we're for all those in the same know. boat right the neologues from Hungary, for example, is what we would basically call what they could be equated with the American conservative movement, uh, roughly. Roughly, correct. 